Hello, Believers Fellowship. Good morning, Pastor Joe here. Just want to give you some updates and encourage you today to let you know that Jesus is still Lord. He's still in control. No matter how chaotic the world gets, he's still sovereign God over all things. These are difficult days. These are chaotic days. These are transition times. And these are times when the Lord, like I told you last week, when the fires fall, they either refine and purify us or they consume us. So as long as we're in Christ, we're inconsumable. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have been fireproofed. So have we. The only thing the fire is going to do is burn away the trash and burn away the dross and burn away the things that don't look like Jesus in our life. Amen. Listen, I know that many people are, are, are frustrated. And I know we continue to get news from all different sorts of places, whether we're getting it from social media or, or the, uh, the Internet or the, the TV broadcast. There's so many conflicting reports. But I have a report that's solid and sure and true that Jesus is still Lord over all things. And it's going to be okay if you're a child of God. The promises are there. But I do, like anybody else, along with other people, people in our, our in our community you know we have we face these up and down times where your emotions go up your emotions go down it gets despairing at times especially as a pastor just looking around and seeing uh, all that's going on and how it's affecting our fellowships not being able to meet or not being able to gather on the level that we'd like to meet some churches are basically doing on stream live stream only we're doing still in person and live stream god's blessing us. We're staying safe. We don't have any outbreaks of COVID in our fellowship. Some have had to deal with that. I'm not going to get proud. I'm just going to thank the Lord for his grace in regard to these areas. But uh, I just want you to know that that can be discouraging. I've been talking to pastors lately. I've seen there's been a, a real sense of discouragement, despair. And so uh, we seek to encourage one another. If, you, if you're a member of another church, I would encourage you to encourage your pastor. Uh, it's, you start looking as a pastor at your flock and you see that you feel like they're so out of, con out of connection, out of distance, and it's, it's, uh, it's deeply concerning. And then you see the reports uh, that continue to build and mount. They ignore the reports that show that there's less deaths than ever. Hospitalization is going down in the state of Texas, but you know the, the media doesn't play to those. Th those don't sound radical enough to get on the, the headline. But I want you to know, since that is what people mostly hearing and seeing, it is depressing. So encourage your pastors, you know, and for pastors and friends of mine and even our brothers in our church who are in leadership, our campus pastors, our deacons, our elders, I would say to you, lift leaders, everybody that's involved in ministering anywhere, don't let the enemy camp in your brain on any level. You know, no trespassing sign to, to, the, to the devil because he will seek to enter in and, you know, to frustrate you. You remember, you've been gifted by the Holy Spirit with the gifts you have. You've been appointed by the Holy Spirit over the ministry he's given you. You've been anointed to carry out that ministry. And I know when you're not being able to function as you have been functioning before, frustration sets in. But learn how to, you know, uh, guard your thoughts and guard your mind and put on the armor of God and continue to pray, and continue to walk in faith. Remember what Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's a, that's a word from God. You know, God's got the church. All right. My responsibility to feed the flock. All right, feed my sheep. His responsibility is to build it. So let's continue to believe him that he's going to do that. And if you find yourself discouraged, look up. Remember the promise that Jesus has given us. It's his church. He'll build it. Hell's not going to prevail against us. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything can go to this. the proverbial hell in a handbasket tomorrow. The church is still in Jesus' hands, and we're going to be in victory no matter what goes on in the world around us. In fact, the worse it gets, the darker it gets, the brighter every little candle shines in the darkness. So shine for Jesus. Amen. And if you're in our church or not in our church, but you're a believer and you're involved in a church, pray for your church. Attend when you can. If you're physically fit and able to attend your church and it's having in-person services, get on down to the house of God. Be a part of what God's doing. Yes, practice all the safety and hygienic guidelines that we've been given, but let's be there. Support it, obviously. Continue to give your, your support to your local church and, and honor the Lord with your offerings that the Lord has blessed you with. Be Get them into the storehouse where ministries are occurring, where ministries are being carried out, and we're doing all that we can to do for the Lord. But the most important thing is, and I think in all of this, is that uh, continue to be the encourager in the fellowship. Be that Barnabas that the New Testament talks about, the, the encourager of the brethren. Lift up your pastor, lift up each other. In fact, I just have a simple challenge for you today. The challenge is this. Think of two people. One that you are, that's maybe not a believer, or not in church, or maybe they're a believer. 
that you would, you would just ask the Lord, put one of those people on your mind and heart. You may already have somebody there in that spot. And then think of one believer in the church, maybe somebody who's not real strong. You know, in these transition times, people that, uh, you know, who are kind of weak in their faith or new in their faith or maybe just have gotten into a place of carnality in their life, they're the first to slip out and not come back in. So pray for somebody today. Maybe it's just somebody that's been a leader in your church. Pray for them today. But two people, one outside the church, one in the church. And then not only I want you to pray for them, all right, I would encourage you to reach out to them by text, by phone, in person is always better. If you get on the phone even and just make a phone call, say, listen, you're on my heart and mind today. I've been praying for you. Just wanted you to know that Jesus has got you. And if anything I can do to help you, let me know. Can you do that? Just be part of the body of Christ, encouraging one another. Simple challenge, two people today, and then you'll see what God does. You may want to pick two more people tomorrow. But whatever it is, whatever God's to put on your heart, then you do that. And let's honor the Lord together. And let's make sure that the devil's not pushing us down when everything else is going down. We're rising to the occasion to be the salt and the light that God's called us to be. Pray for your pastors, whether you're in our church or some other church, reach out and encourage them as well. God loves you. Your pastors love you. Your church loves you. Let's stay faithful to him. Thanks for listening today. God bless you.